welcome this morning to our first service of 2021 and I wish you all a joyful year for that is our theme this morning joy the joy of the Lord the angels sang it the angels proclaimed it joy to the world the Savior has come joy said the psalmist I will yet rejoice for the joy of the Lord is my strength I will rejoice in you my Savior let's rejoice this morning and seek the Lord of all creation who is here with us as we worship him with joy in our hearts. Standing here with the roar of the motorway, one is reminded that life continues on. Maybe 2020 looks a bit like this scene of broken branches and broken dreams. But God is still the same. God is with us, Emmanuel, and he was with us and will be with us. So we need to find joy joy in this coming year joy in what god is doing and will do so this morning alan is going to bring us our intercessory prayers and a bit later stephen will bring us our bible reading joy well we've made it to 2021 the 21st year of the 21st century. So Happy New Year, everybody. Theme of today's service is joy. All around the world, Christians, in reply to the statement, this is the day that the Lord has made, will reply, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Happiness is transitory. 
and depends on our circumstances. But joy is ever present, coming from the, the sure hope we have of eternal life. So this is the day that the Lord has made. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you invite us to come and pray to you. We pray for the COVID crisis, that the numbers will decrease. And we thank you for the successful production of vaccines and ask that there will be fair and rapid distribution of them throughout the world. Father God, we pray, we pray for protection, strength and courage for all NHS, police, armed forces and all key workers in this difficult time. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who do not have the freedom we have to, currently at least, to enjoy and worship you. In particular, we, we've heard in the last week in Nigeria of Christians who were murdered. Boko Haram had said and were correct to say, we will do Christmas. And they did in the north. A church was burnt. Seven Christians were killed. In the south, 27 were killed. In the new situation, Lord, for the UK, UK and its dealings with the EU, we pray for wisdom for leaders here and there. We pray for climate change. We pray that for the that, that there will be real commitment from leaders around the world as as we run out of time before the disastrous output of temperature change. Finally, we pray for our community. There are many people on our prayer leads list, but you know them all, Lord, and we pray for them. We've learned of uh, Stephanie, uh, a daughter of a friend of, of Bessie Rogers. We pray for her, uh, the fact that she has COVID and, and I believe pneumonia in the hospital. We pray for her and all, uh, there are many others, Lord, that have, who need your help, who are in hospital, we pray for them too. We pray finally for the leaflets that we gave out to about 30 leaflets over the Christmas period. We pray that they will be read and that your spirit will, will convince people that they need to know more and that, that they are missing out, not having a relationship with you. And we ask you to pray. We pray for all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I was lost, your mercy found me, caught me from darkness, now I can see. Great love, telling of the one 
who has saved my soul. I will shout it out to the mountain tops. You're my freedom song. You're my freedom song. Sing it. letter to the Philippians chapter 2 beginning at verse 1. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, 
to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Well, what a year 2020 was. It brought something few as thought possible in our safe little island, something we never expected ever to see, a pandemic that would bring us literally to a halt, that would confine us in our homes, suspicious of everyone around us, Stop us from hugging even those closest to us. Paranoid to wash our hands. Stop us singing in church, even entering its doors. Changing our values of who are heroes. We might say good riddance 2020. But as we enter 2021 with an even greater threat of, a new, of the new variant, and despite the relief that there are vaccines gradually being rolled out, insecurity continues. So why did God tell me to talk about joy today? Well, bear with me. I'm not going to say you should laugh at all times and be really happy at all this. Not at all. Let's just see what God says in the Bible. A very good place to begin. Happiness comes from outside circumstances. Joy comes from something within. God wants us to be joyful, to rejoice. Trust in the Lord and do good, says the psalmist. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desire. And in another, we were filled with laughter. We sang for joy. And the other nation said, what amazing things the Lord has done for them. And Luke said, God blesses you when you are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. God blesses you who weep now, for in due time you will laugh. How we long for those joyous days, yet they are ours. The Bible focuses on the joy despite circumstances. So, is there a difference between joy and happiness? The Reverend Dr. Christopher Benick wrote, it's important to know the difference between being happy and having joy. Cheryl Crow famously wrote in a song, If it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. If it makes you happy, then why the hell are you so sad? Crow apparently could discern that being happy isn't always what's best for us. That is because happiness is an emotion in which we experience feelings ranging from contentment and satisfaction to bliss and intense pleasure. Whereas joy is a stronger, less common feeling than happiness. We experience joy when we achieve selflessness to the point of personal sacrifice. We feel joy when we are spiritually connected to God and to people. Cheryl Crow knows there are plenty of things in this world we can do that might allow us to feel bliss or pleasure, but ultimately they leave us feeling empty. Ironically, the Apostle Paul knew this as well. In Galatians 5.19, Paul actually lists some of these things sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. If you didn't know it already, the Bible is pretty specific about these kind of things. But a little bit later in the same verse, Paul tells us that if we walk in the ways of God, then we will experience joy and other feelings as well. Love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Paul is not implying that happiness is all bad. We may feel happy as a result of any number of things that are not wrong morally. But the larger point is that happiness as a feeling, is not founded on something necessarily being good for us. Joy, on the other hand, is at least grounded in the idea that something is good for someone else. We have joy when, even in our suffering, we are acting towards someone else's well-being. If you have ever selfishly given of yourself or that which you own, 
you are certainly familiar with this feeling. This also explains verses in the Bible that might initially seem difficult to understand without this distinction between joy and happiness. For instance, Hebrews 12 verse 2 makes a lot of sense in this context. It reads, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Reminding us of our reading in Philippians. So, does belonging to Christ help you in any way? Does his love comfort you at all? Do you share anything in common because of the Holy Spirit? Has Christ ever been gentle and loving toward you? If any of these things has happened to you, then agree with one another. Have the same love. Be one in spirit and in the way you think and act. By doing so, you will make my joy complete. Do not do anything, only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. None of you should look out just for your own good. Each of you should also look out for the good of others. As you deal with one another, you should think and act as Jesus did. In his very nature, he was God. Jesus was equal with God, but Jesus didn't take advantage of that fact. Instead, he made himself nothing. He did this by taking on the nature of a servant. He was made just like human beings. And as one of us, he faced trials, temptations, suffering, sorrow, loss. But even with his eyes but, with his eyes on the final goal, salvation for us and heaven. He won through for you and me. That's why he said in his conversation with the disciples just before Gethsemane in John's Gospel, in chapters 15, 16 and 17, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way as I have loved you. Then later he says, so you have sorrow now, but you will, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice and no one can rob you of that joy. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. And then I am coming to you, God, now. But I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. Wow! Jesus' joy for us, in us. James warns us though, my brothers and sisters, you will face all kinds of trouble. When you do, think of it as pure joy. Your faith will be tested. You know that when this happens, it will produce in you the strength to continue. So it's worth it all. As difficult and hard as times are. Because as Peter says, though you have not seen him, that's Jesus, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is just what King David said. His psalms are full of sorrow, difficulty, deep depression, hopelessness, fear for his very life. He often ends saying, Yet will I praise the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In you is fullness of joy. In you will I trust. 
Jesus did just that. He lived, worked and died for the joy of God, for our salvation, for heaven. Now all this might cause us to consider then what motivates us in life. If all of our efforts are focused on trying to be happy, I think that we may be missing the point. But if our purpose is to have joy in our lives, then we have committed to God and one another in a way that seeks something better than simple self-satisfaction. So, what are you doing in the world that is causing you joy? What can I see outside this limited present life? What can I do for God by doing something simple for the few people today I have contact with? If you can't answer that question, do what Jesus said. Ask him. So, put yourself out there and do something good for someone else and feel what happens. This is joy. Share Jesus' love and gift of salvation. This is joy. And it is in these that you will come to know God more and be more like him by the power of his spirit within you. Being more like Jesus. This is joy that no one can take away from us.
righteousness and I love you Lord At church anniversary in May 1997 you drawn up and set together a covenant of commitment. So at the beginning of this new year, as a fellowship scattered, but yet together in God's spirit, we will say together the words of that covenant. The words will come up on your screen. Jesus said, I will build my church. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. We, the members of Matson Baptist Church, accepting God as our Father and Jesus Christ as our Saviour and Lord, commit ourselves to love and serve him who laid down his life for us. By his grace and in the power of his Holy Spirit, we will seek to live out our Christian calling, that is to live a good and holy life, show the love of Jesus to all we meet, become mature followers of Jesus, further God's purposes in the wider world. To this end, we will join together for worship, the Lord's Supper, teaching and mutual agreement. We will pray and care for one another. In the strength of his Holy Spirit, we will use our abilities to build the local church. Being open to his leading, we will strive to fulfill Jesus' great commission to baptise and encourage others in becoming wholehearted disciples of Jesus. And now let's pray. Heavenly Father, we covenant together today in our own homes to live each day for you, serving each other and strangers to be like you Jesus and know your joy in the struggles of these present days help us to remember that your plans for us are good to bring us through to your eternal glory so lift our eyes above this very real storm and so see you help us to trust and rejoice sharing you, the God of our salvation, in not just words, but acts of love for each other and everyone we meet. For as Brueggemann said, the prophetic tasks of the church are to tell the truth in a society that lives in illusion, grieve in a society that practices denial, and express hope in a society that lives in despair. And so, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.